want to create cool shots like that in Blender, the first step is always camera tracking. Okay, fair. It's not the most glamorous thing in the world, but it's better than having your 3D objects gliding around the scene like hockey players. So let's pick the lesser of two evils here, power our Blender, and get to work. Actually, I lied. Before we open up Blender, we should probably cover some guidelines on how to actually record your footage, lest you unintentionally shoot yourself in the foot before you even get to motion tracking. In short, you want to record a location with some features that stand out from the rest of the environment. You see, the way tracking works is that the software finds unique details in your shot and tries to hold on to those points for dear life as the camera moves. Do this enough times, and Blender will eventually be able to create a digital camera that matches the movement of your real camera. So yeah, do yourself a favor and pick a location with lots of unique features. Additionally, smoothness is kind of a must, so if you plan on filming your shot like this, you're probably better off just doing the tracking by hand. Lastly, crank that shutter speed up so that your shot will have little to no motion blur, and with all these tips combined, you should have a shot that's ready to track. Alright, now we can move on to motion tracking. First things first, open up the movie clip editor, select the file icon, and open your shot. Then you can set scene frames to get the entire shot in your timeline, and prefetch to improve the smoothness in which it plays in your scene. Now it's time to begin tracking your shot. There are essentially two approaches you can take to this process. We'll call one the Gordon Ramsay approach, and the other the, uh, I don't know, Guy Fieri approach. As you may have expected, the Gordon Ramsay approach involves careful planning and precision. Everything's so precise, everything's yes. so, it's almost like it's in military fashion. You're first gonna need to scrub through your shot and find small, point-like features that stand out from the background. These points are going to be where we place our trackers. Delicious. You're also going to want to find points that last throughout a significant portion of your shot, as that will be helpful when solving the camera, but we'll get to that later. To start off, you're going to want at least 8 of these. Once you've selected your points, you're going to need to choose your motion tracking models for your trackers, which essentially tells Blender what type of motion your shot has in it. For example, if your shot is just moving side to side, the location model would probably be best. Likewise, if the shot has some scaling or rotation, then just select the option from the dropdown that best best fits your shot's movement pattern. If you're like me, however, and your shot has a little bit of everything in addition to orbiting, then the affine option would be best since it's able to track changes in perspective and shearing. And finally, with all that, you can select all your tracks and click track forward. The great thing about slow cooking is you do most of the work in advance and then put your feet up. And cool. Now, if some of your tracks went a little haywire, what you could do is go to the frame where they started acting up and clear the keyframes before and after so that your track is stable all the way through. With that, essentially all you need to do is repeat this process so that you have a total of eight tracks at all times in your shot. So simply go to the first frame where you lost one of your tracks, create a new set of tracks starting from that frame and continue chugging on. Okay, with that snooze fest out of the way, let's tackle the Guy Fieri approach. I'm Guy Fieri and we're rolling out! As you would expect, this approach is basically just a rambunctious plug and chug. All you're gonna do is go to the start of your shot, and instead of meticulously looking for features by hand, you're just going to click Detect Features, which will do this for you automatically. Out of the gate, dynamite! Then choose your model, select your tracks, and click Track Forward. Is your mouth watering yet? Mine is. <laughs> And that's about as complicated as it gets. All you need to do now is find frames where you don't have enough tracks, detect features, and track forward again. You can even go to the last frame and track features backwards. Like last time, as long as you have 8 tracks going at all times in your shot, you should be good to go. And once you're done with all that, you're now ready for the moment of truth, camera solving. This is where the fun begins. This is when Blender collects the data from all of your tracks and does some sort of black magic to reconstruct a digital camera. To start, you're going to want to select Keyframe, which will help Blender in the initial stages of reconstruction. Then I also recommend going to the Camera tab and dialing in the focal length to something close to your actual camera's focal length, which will help to give you an accurate camera solve. Additionally, you can also check Refine Focal Length, which will cause Blender to approximate the focal length of your camera and apply it to the digital reconstruction. Then we can click Solve.
If you did everything right, you should see a random number pop up in the right hand corner of your screen. This number gives you a solid idea of how accurate your solve is. With a number below 0.3 being ideal, anything between 0.3 and 3 being okay, and anything greater than 3 being a no-go. Oh no! Yeah, so if you have a bad solve error, you might need to go clean up your tracks a little bit. The easiest way to do this is to pop over to the cleanup panel. Here, you can automatically delete tracks that fall out of a specified quality threshold. First, you can select a threshold for the minimum number of frames a track should be active for. As stated previously, tracks that last a long time are typically better for reconstruction, so we want this number to be sufficiently high. One way to decide on a number for this is to look at the number of frames between the two reconstruction frames and use that as your minimum number. Then you can choose the maximum reprojection error that a given track is allowed to have. Huh? Basically, the reconstructor camera has created its own 3D tracks that correspond to the original tracks, and the reprojection error of a track tells you how far away an original track is from its reconstructed doppelganger. You can see this number by selecting a track and opening up the tracks panel. So to make this real simple, in order to make this number smaller, the average errors of all the tracks need to be smaller as well. Therefore, for the error threshold, you want to choose the smallest number possible that still leaves enough tracks to do another solve. You can then click Clean Tracks, which will select all the tracks outside of your specified threshold, and then click X to delete them. Lastly, to really ensure the best possible solve, you can click Filter Tracks, which will allow you to select and delete tracks that are unstable. And with that, you should hopefully get a better solve. We did it! We did it! We did it! We did it! No! We did it! Now we can finally escape the movie clip editor and set up a scene in 3D. All you need to do is pop down to the setup panel, click set as background, and set as tracking scene. Then to get everything oriented properly, select three floor tracks that are active throughout a significant portion of your shot and click floor. Finally, to set the scale of your scene, you can select two tracks that look to be about a meter or so apart and click set scale. Now, once you open up the 3D viewport, you should find that you have a 3D scene all ready to go, complete with a floor plane and shadow catcher. So with that, looks like my job's done here. Bye. Oh, yeah, y you probably want me to explain how I made this final shot, huh? Well, it's actually really easy since I use Production Crate's Blender add-on, which allows you to take models straight from their site and literally just plop them into the scene. I didn't even have to set up any material since it does that for you automatically. Hey, that's pretty good. So I just made a 3D shot where different 3D models would pop in and out of view. I then rendered that out with a transparent background, plopped it into a compositor like After Effects, and used a screenshot of the add-on along with production crate glitch and lightning assets to create the final shot.